how do we see the scapula not as an amulet but actually as a, an instrument of piety first of all it's a sacramental a sacramental the church defines this as a sign one point and we have according to what i was able to research 21 different types of scapular from with the intention of mary that the scapular is a garment it's a cloth something that will cover you in the trenches in the first world war that all the soldiers went to wash up and then it was a lull in the bombardment zone and one of them starts washing up takes off the scapula and then they start bombarding and so they'll take off running welcome to Salve Maria, the podcast of the Heralds of the Gospel. Welcome to this new episode of Salve Maria, the podcast of the Heralds of the Gospel, because today is really, really interesting. We're going to talk about the scapular of Our Lady. Salve Maria, Father Arthur. Salve Maria. Salve everyone. Maria, Brother Justin. Salve Maria. Uh, and so, but also, I think, Father, we should say Salve Maria to our audience, especially the ones that are listening to us in Radio Maria Canada, a Catholic voice in your home. Also, for those who are listening over the audio in the podcast in Podbean and in Apple Podcasts and also in Spotify. We're also there. Please go to the uh, notes of the program and find exactly where you can you can uh, you can find the version the audio only version for this program. And also, I don't know if if, if you noticed since the last program about uh, divine uh, mercy, we're also now. Uh, been published. This program is being published on Thursdays. We switched a little bit because uh, our advisors here in the in the in the different uh, social media and so on, no, said that it's better for us to publish on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. So if you are watching this, um, make sure that Thursdays at 7 p.m. Canada time, <laughs> we 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 are there, and, and and you can also, of course, listen to the program. But this said. Father Arthur, what a very good opportunity because, well, you're 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 a priest. You you hear confessions, no? And, and our main uh, um, concern always is, well, how do of course how do we get heaven? How we avoid hell? Uh, but also, time in purgatory is a concern, no? And Our Lady, with the with the promises that she made with the scapular, she actually uh, they they have she has given two promises and freed from purgatory. On the first Saturday after death, hmm? the Sabbatine privilege. But also requires sanctity of life, no? Of Holiness course. of life. So, Father, could you explain to us, number one, how do we see the scapula not as an amulet, but actually as, yes, a, yes. as, a, as an instrument of piety? This is very important. First of all, it's a sacramental. Hmm? A sacramental, the Church defines this as a sign of grace is not a, a, a grace in itself as a sacrament a sacrament is something that produces the grace a sacramental is something that prepares you for the grace it's a path towards grace a path, exactly it doesn't create grace like a sacrament no it comes through the church the church creates a sacramental like holy water, like the sign of the cross, like blessing the children, for example. All those are sacramentals. They, they are going to bring the grace, hmm? uh, and uh, they are very useful. Well, among the, the many sacramentals that we have, one of the most important ones that we have for our salvation is the brown scapula. And actually for us heralds, you know, it's very simple to speak about the scapula because you, it's impossible to see a herald without a scapula. <laughs> there is no habit with that. But also, j j just for the note, Brother Justin, how many scapulas are there? there the tradition of scapulars kind of exploded at one point, and we have, uh, according to what I was able to research, 21 different types of scapular from, um, from of course, brown, green, red, Black, and blue, blue, are blue different white, <laughs> um, every, uh, the scapular of Our Lady of Good Counsel, the scapular of Our Lady of Lourdes, of Guadalupe, of St. Dominic, of St. Michael the Archangel. They're all types. So you hear about different scapulars. It isn't that they're wrong. It's a different devotion. But so to avoid, avoid confusion with the audience, right? We are, today we're talking about the brown scapular of Our Lady. Which the is the Carmelite. scapular of Mary. Mm -hmm. This is the scapular of Mary. We're going to explain... What does the scapular mean? Hmm? First of all, the, the word scapular comes from Latin and means shoulders, because it's something that you wear over the shoulders. You can't use it in the pocket. No, no. 
It's not meant to be, you know, anywhere else. It's meant to be on you. Some people have a strange, div strange deviation in which they take the scapular of various, not just the brown, but, and they stick it in their wallet. Yeah. But it, in the car, in the mirror in the car? Oh, yeah, mirror in the, the car. car, tangle it with the rosary, and then <laughs> there you have it. No, it's not meant for that. It's, you're mm. defeating the purpose. Exactly. And exactly. some people also use, the, use them here, no? in, the, in, your, uh, <laughs> exactly. in, your, in your hand. No, it's not. But what, what was the intention of Mary that the scapular is a garment? It's a cloth, something that will cover you. Which garment is this? It's the garment of Mary. It's the mantle of Mary. Like Mary has a mantle. When you are using the scapular, you are under Mary's mantle, under Mary's um, garment. You are clothed by Mary. And this is the great protection that the scapular is going to give you. So it's an extension of the person of Our Lady, in a sense. Precisely. You are, you are, uh, th this is why the scapular is very much related to the consecration of Mary. Mm -hmm. Using the scapular is more or less a, a saying to Mary, I am consecrated to you, I am under your mantle, your protection. It shows a, a strong connection to Our Lady. What a nice Tremendous. theme for those who have done the consecration and continue doing the consecration online with the health of the gospel. By the way, I think we are now over two million people in the world that are doing the consecration. So if you have done the consecration and you don't have the scapula yet, well, keep here course, until the end because this ready. is... Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, there's a great connection between the consecration, the scapular, and the rosary. Ah. Those things go all together. Because uh, the, when you consecrate yourself to Mary, you want to be under her protection. Mm -hmm. It is exactly what Mary came to uh, bring to the world in 1251. We're going to tell the story about uh, her coming to, um, to, to England uh, to St. Simon Stock, who was the head of the Carmelites at the time. Hmm? The Father, we were talking century. about the, the amulets. What's the difference between an amulet and, like, old ladies? Scapula. It's a huge difference, though. No? <laughs> uh, in a very short yeah. word, maybe, because, you know, again, there are, you know, superstitions around. Exactly. There are so many people who, you know, take religious things as superstitions. I, I can lead a life that maybe is not that good, and because I use the scapula, I'm not going to be I'm saved. saved. I, I remember seeing a, a whole uh, car in, in close by to here, and the car was there all shiny and special and what have you, and it, on its rearview mirror, it had kind of a tangled mess of a rosary, uh, a medal of Saint Anthony, a scapular somehow tangled in there, a little bit of a little bit of palms kind of stuck in there too, and then a devil's horn. Oh, so it was like it was hitting all exactly. altars. It was like <laughs> exactly. it, it was covered. It was covered. <laughs> I mean, it was like covered all bases, everybody. Eh? Everybody's covered. Everybody's happy Precisely. with me, so I have all the good luck. No <laughs> maliocchio. No. Precisely that an amulet will be a a false sacramental, a sacramental that is not true. Can we say it's a sacramental of the devil? Could that say. is what it is. Yeah, absolutely. it is wow. absolutely what it is. Because if not, yeah. it's God from God. It's, it comes from whom? Mm. Mm. So we should avoid all those those type of things, etc. Because this is completely false. Mm. It's a sin against faith. Yeah, exactly. So. We want we want to be under under the real protection of God and not under the false protection of the devil. The devil actually doesn't protect anyone. Mm. He hates everyone. So, I mean, <laughs> get, get away from takes him. takes away what he promises. Yeah, this yes. is something we, we were talking about beforehand, right? It's like, Our Lady gives more than she promises. Precisely. The devil promises you a lot and takes the coins out of your pocket in the <laughs> exactly. process. He, you get nothing, and, nothing. You're, and you're a minus, a large <laughs> minus. So, so this, is, this is the opposite. Hmm? So, the, the, the scapular, therefore, is something over the shoulders. It's a garment you're under. Mary's protection and uh, this is why we should wear the scapular with certain conditions with a certain state of, sp uh, of spirit this is not something that you can have in order to avoid to be saint no no uh, this is to help you to be a saint and not, not just to to uh, to replace you know uh, holiness uh, this yeah. is to some people have you some people holiness. almost apply to the scapular an element of superstition, which is that they believe that they don't need to do anything. No, if they wear it, they're That's saved. Fine. Exactly, and it's not even that. It's, a, it's a, it, well, I'll get a, I'll get away with it. Of course. So, can we go to the origins? Who were the Carmelites? What's the origin of the scapula? How's that? Well, the short origin, the short story, 
will start with St. Simon's talk. The long story will start with Elijah the prophet in the Old Testament. He, Elijah, is the first person to have devotion to Mary even before she existed. <laughs> he is the first devotee uh, to Mary because he uh, is, was a prophet of God who was um, warning the people of God that, that were adoring Baal instead of God and that uh, he was calling them to conversion. God gives him basically the keys to heaven and says, he, as, as long as you don't allow, it will not rain in Israel rain. because of idolatry. Yeah. So the, the, the sarcasm begins uh, by the, the drought. Three years <laughs> and, and a half, there is no rain in Israel. Everything is dying. There is no food, therefore, there's no, nothing to drink, etc. It's terrible. So uh, Elijah finally uh, wants to intercede for his people. For them, they had already understood that God is, is not happy with them and they have to convert. So he goes to Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel. And there he prays to God for rain. And he sends Elijah up the mountain seven times. This is very interesting because um, he sends him uh, up the mountain to see if there is a cloud coming in order to announce to the king that the rain will be coming and the mercy of God will be on them if they convert. So uh, he, uh, the, the servant goes up six times and comes down saying there is no cloud. There is no sign from uh, heaven that anything good is going to happen. Then finally, on the seventh times, which, which uh, the number seven means in the fullness of times. This is very interesting. In the fullness of times, there is going to be rain. And uh, he sees a cloud that's coming from the ocean, apparently in the form of a, uh, uh, of a foot which is the foot of Mary, mm -hmm. from Genesis. Mm. He tells Elijah, there is, a, there is a sign. There is a, a cloud in this shape, etc. And I, Elijah, mystically understand that this represents the mother of the Messiah. So he thinks, well, if the Messiah is holy, if he is going to have a mother, that mother must be holy. And this is a sign of the mother, that uh, she is the one who is going to bring the blessings, which is the water, no? the blessings, the graces, etc. She is the mediator, the one who is going to bring the, the blessing. And very interesting that uh, the water is not salt. Nevertheless, it comes from the ocean, which is salt. Salt represents sin. Mm -hmm. So Mary is the one who is going to bring the water without sin, because she is without sin. So the water that she brings is the water without sin, is sweet water. So uh, the rain comes and uh, Elijah, because of this, he starts to, uh, to bring um, monks together, uh, hermits together, you know, to pray to God in, on Mount Carmel. And it is from Mount Carmel, God is kept on Mount, Mount Carmel. And when Pentecost comes, the uh, monks of Mount Carmel, they come down and they are baptized. And they are introduced to Mary. And then they go back to Mount Carmel and they build the first chapel in honor of Mary on Mount Carmel. Mount so Carmel is presently uh, Haifa. It says okay. overlooking the city of Haifa. Northern, Northern Israel. Northern Israel, close to Lebanon. But it's, it's, it's a phenomenal place, you know, for people who visit the Holy Land. It's really fantastic. Yeah. But, okay, but Father, how do we connect? Because, okay, St. Elijah basically is the father of all Carmelites then. He's the, the founder of the order. He's the one to introduce devotion to Mary. Devotion to Mary. He has a mantle, and he passes his mantle to Elijah. In the same way that Mary later on when she's going to appear to St. Simon's talk, she will pass her mantle to St. Simon. So the, um, 
what a topic, eh? The mantle of Our Lady. We're always mm. asking for protection under the mantle of Our Lady. Now the mantle passes back and forth. But I'm not so profit. sure that many people recognize the role of this mantle throughout history. Because they talk about the mantle as something that is ethereal and that it's not a part of their lives. Mm -hmm. They fail to see that if they use the brown scapular, they already have the mantle of Our Lady. Which is. Well, which is. Yeah. Which it is, is true. But they don't it recognize is. it as yeah. such. Mm -hmm. Well, but it, it, it well, is. We need to, yeah, we need to, to focalize that that you no, know, that is it's just the scapula. Even if it is a small one like this, no, it, e even so, no, we we could be a big one, could be the small one, but it's precisely yeah, because the the scapula is also a symbol of the spiritual mantle of Mary, of her spirit that falls on the person who consecrates him, herself to Mary, and she will receive the mantle, the spirit of, of Mary. So. Um, these monks, they go through through centuries in the in the Holy Land, and uh, uh, in the 13th century, finally they go to Europe because of the persecutions of the Muslims at the time. They have to flee; many die. Others uh, go to to Europe, and they end up in England. And in England was this uh, this man who was very holy since he was very very young. He was and a hermit on his own. Right? Yes, he was a hermit. And Mary appears to him even uh, before the apparition of the scapular. And Mary tells him that the monks are coming. This man is Simon. And he lived in a tree, apparently. <laughs> he was <laughs> big a, tree a trunk. hermit. <laughs> yes. I don't know how he was living in a tree. but So he was known as Stock because he was, he was living inside the tree. And finally, he meets these, um, these Carmelites that they moved to, uh, to England in 1241. And he joins them. And very soon after, in, in 45, he becomes the superior of them. Because they're recognizing him a tremendous holiness. He's old already. And he's very holy, a man of, of, uh, of God and a man of Our Lady. So one day he is uh, praying, he's getting old. And he sees that his order is not well accepted in Europe, that the Carmelites, uh, people don't want to know, not even the Pope wants to know about them. But Father, this is also something interesting now that, uh, that our brothers uh, were commenting in Central America, is the fact that they brought a lot of sanctity with them and people were not accepting them because it was a different way of exactly. you know, seeing sanctity and actually it was a very uh, well set you know, degree of uh, virtue and perfection. Exactly. And so they were not being accepted, not because of uh, any fault of theirs, but rather because people did not want that kind of uh, sanctity. Exactly. So the only solution was for Mary to do a miracle in order to show that this was the way. <laughs> so uh, Simon is praying and he composes the, the hymn of the Carmelite, which is called Flos Carmeli, the flower of Mont Carmel. So the flower of Mont Carmel is Mary. So he sings this to Mary. And uh, uh, on the night from the 15th to the 16th of July, 1251, uh, he is praying and he is asking Mary, please give us a sign of your protection. Give us a sign that we are under your protection. A way out of this. <laughs> precisely, that there is a solution for, for this and we're not going to disappear. Because we are your devotees. They are the ones from Karma, where, where uh, devotion to Mary started, as we mentioned at the beginning, uh, with Prophet Elijah. So they are the continuation of this, um, of this fa spiritual family. By the way, Father, if they disappeared, no St. Teresa of Avila, no, no. centuries of uh, child Jesus. Of course, exactly. No, uh, no it's dying. John no, and cross. <laughs> yeah, many. Saint John of the Cross. <laughs> a lot of Carmelites. A lot of holy Carmelites. Convents, monasteries. Wow, unbelievable. So Saint Simon is in a place called Esford, hmm, which is near the river, and at the time was uh, very, very simple, very poor. There were in a very, very difficult conditions, and he's praying. Apparently, it was at at uh, noon time. The noontime. He is praying and then Mary appears to him. And Mary says to Simon, Simon, don't worry. I'm going to give you a sign of my protection. Whoever worth this, she doesn't mention the word scapular, whoever, uh, whoever worth this, and she takes her mantle. Her mantle. <laughs> and, and puts it on St. Simon, 
whoever wore this and died with this will not die in mortal sin, will not have eternal punishment, will be saved forever. Why? Because Mary is protecting the person. When Mary protects somebody, you know, you, you can be sure that, you know, nothing wrong is going to happen to you. You are going to be under her protection forever. So, uh, he is extremely happy. He receives the mantle. And Mary, Mary goes away. But still, they are in Ellsford and they are in a very bad situation. <laughs> so, they decide to go to Rome to tell the Pope what had happened. So they are. But remember that they're not terribly well well welcomed, right? No. So they're going to knock on a door that's not really open to them. No, of course, exactly. It was a difficult mission, but he said oh, the only way now is to go to Rome and tell the Pope, "Look, we received this, uh, you know, this mantle, and uh, you know, we want to be recognized by you or something." Huh? Uh, so they are on the way. Uh, Simon with another brother, and uh, at. Uh, at a, at a short distance, somebody uh, approached them and tells them that, that such a person who was a very noble family is dying and he doesn't want to repent, he doesn't want to convert, he doesn't want to, to, to hear a priest, confession, nothing. And they ask Simon, can you do something? <laughs> I see that you are religious, can you do something for this person? And Simon says, yes. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Idea, moment. <laughs> so he is taken to, to this house. It was a, a, a palace. He is uh, taken to the man. And Samuel has the inspiration to take that mantle and put the mantle of Mary on top of the person. But he was blaspheming. He was uh, insulting everyone. Uh, he was invoking the devil, yes. saying, you know, come, you know, and actually kill the one that hurt me. Yeah. Uh, and he he had all kinds of, uh, I mean... Vindictives, yeah. Yeah, maybe he was possessed or something, but, but he was in a horrible state of spirit. Or worse than that, I don't think... Uh, no. So someone did... did uh, Others had tried to, to, to say things to him, but it was useless. So the only thing that uh, Simon uh, did was to take the mantle and put it on this man. And immediately, the man changes completely. <laughs> and he says that he's sorry, that he wants to confess, that he wants to repent, and this and this and that. And the whole family <laughs> is on, in admiration, oh. you know. <laughs> so what happened is that um, this news goes around. And the perception of the Carmelites changes completely. And everybody wants to know who are these Carmelites with this brown scapular that, uh, that uh, do miracles. Yeah. So it was almost not necessary to go to the Pope. It was already done. You know, the <laughs> <laughs> so, so on the way uh, to Rome, uh, people want to know, etc. And uh, the Pope receives them and, and, and everything is completely transformed. And uh, the order that was very, very, very small uh, in 1251, uh, in the following 50 years, they, uh, they um, grow uh, to 50,000 members wow. all over Europe. Wow. So it really spread you know, because of the protection of Mary. So well, there are some characteristics also, you know, that uh, the saints tell, and that that the scapular, they say, is a sign of health. It's a promise of health. Yeah? It's a. It's also here is a sign of salvation in danger. Of course, it's a covenant of peace, mm -hmm. and it's a sign of uh, eternal alliance. Right. So, can we also incorporate that into into the narration? Because I think it's. That's what we want. No, those are the effects of the of the, uh, uh, of the um, uh, scapular, because uh, when Simon receives the scapular, he he's amazed, he's enchanted with Mary, etc. But he he's not realizing how much Mary is bringing to them, and not only to him and his order, but to the whole world. Because we will see that later on, the scapular became more and more and more popular, and it's in the uh, 20th century that finally the um, the scapular. Uh, becomes a basically a, an official sacramental of, of the universal church, not mm -hmm. only of the Carmelites. Mm. So somebody maybe in the audience is wondering, no? And um, okay, but what is there exactly for me? So what can we tell them in order to number one not lose hope, but also 
uh, to have somehow an encouragement to practice virtue? I think this is going to become in the future kind of a, you know, everybody will receive the scapular of Mary. It will come to become a, a, a popular thing. Because the more we understand the scapular, the more we realize that this is, this is essential. It's, it's, it's completely madness, uh, uh, a Catholic, not to receive the scapular. I mean, th this is such a gift. Uh, so, such are the benefits of using the scapular. And it's so simple. It's so, so Marian, so, so nice, so kind, etc. that um, what you can get from the scapular is nothing else than eternal life. And when you mention health, it is the health of the body, but very especially the health of the soul. The first miracle that the scapular did, uh, uh, that we just mentioned, as you can see, the person was cured of the soul. Mm -hmm. But actually, the person died. Yeah. But he died in, the, in the, the grace of God, which is, <laughs> you know, a tremendous the difference. Greatest, the greatest gift that could be given. Of course. So, so, so Mary wants to give the, the maximum. All the other scapulars, actually, you know, that, that, that were mentioned a, a little bit earlier, they all bring uh, benefits to the person. But the brown scapular is the only one is going to bring the eternal benefits. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So that, in that sense, we, we in our opinion, the brown scapula is scapula, is scapula number one. And that's why there's so many papal pronouncements concerning the, the brown scapula. It's because of its paramount and primordial importance. Oh. It, it, what's interesting also is the connection, the modern connection that the brown scapula has, right? We're talking about the origins, you know, with Elijah mm -hmm. and Elisha and St. Simon Stock. Even more present, right? When when the Pope gave the universal uh, uh, dispensation, so that anyone not not a outside of the Carmelite could impose the uh, brown scapular. But we have a very strong link between the message of Fatima, exactly, and um, and the uh, and the brown scapular, which we were talking about earlier. It, it, but a lot of people forget that point. Why don't we go to a small pause here in the program, mm -hmm. right in the middle, so those who are uh, listening in the radio, you know, they can we can do this uh, this pause for commercials. But what about we come back in uh, five minutes and then we go to the promises and the requirements that this okay. capillar demands. Yeah? So let's pass now the microphone to Father Ryan Murphy, who's going to tell us also about another beautiful devotion that the heralds are promoting here in the channel of the heralds of the gospel. One second, and we, we are back. Salve Maria! I'm Father Ryan Murphy of the Heralds of the Gospel, and I'm delighted to extend an invitation to each and every one of you. In the midst of our busy lives, it's crucial to take a moment of reflection, of solace, and of prayer. That's why I would like to personally invite you to join us every day at 3 p.m. for a special and powerful devotion, the Divine Mercy Chaplet. The Divine Mercy Chaplet is a beautiful prayer that embodies the boundless compassion of our Lord. It's a time to come together as a community, regardless of where we are, and lift up our intentions, our hopes, and even our burdens to the heart of Jesus. Imagine all around the world, countless voices uniting in prayer at this very hour. It's a moment of connection, of spiritual unity, and of seeking God's mercy in a troubled world. So mark your calendars, set your alarms, and make a commitment to join us each day at 3 p.m. Tune in and experience the transformative power of the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Let this be a sanctuary of peace amidst the noise of life. And thank you for being a part of our Heralds Canada YouTube channel. Together, let's embark on this journey of faith, hope, and mercy. I'm looking forward to praying with you every day at 3 p.m. May God's love and mercy shine upon you always. And until we meet again, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we are back in this episode about the scapular. And now, Father, we are going to talk with the audience about the promises and the privileges, or let's put it this way, the privileges and the requirements in order to benefit from the promises of the scapular. So, I don't know, 
Father, guide us on this one. Well, the first uh, privilege or the first uh, promise that Mary did, she did it to Saint Simon herself personally. When she said that whoever was this, which is the scapula, whoever was this, I promise that uh, the person will not die in mortal sin, <laughs> will not uh, receive eternal punishment. So, so that's basically avoiding hell. Avoiding hell. That the person will die in friendship with God. That the person will repent. If he's a sinner, he will repent before he, he sins. If he's a good person, he will be even better in the moment of, of death. It will be the, the, the highest uh, moment in his spiritual life, the moment of his death. It will be the, the best moment of his life. Hmm? So this is a great promise that Mary uh, does for the ones who put themselves under her protection. All those who were the, uh, the scapular, as they are uh, uh, dressed in the same way, because is, is the scapular is a garment, we're all dressed in the same way. So we're all part of the same family. So we, we are all part of the family of Mary, and who belong to the family of Mary obviously belong to the family of uh, Jesus and the family of Joseph. That's the holy family on earth. In the very beginning, Father, you are commenting, no? How it is interesting, the fact that when Our Lady gives the scapula, she doesn't, doesn't go and, okay, this is a, a foreign object. She takes her own and gives it to, no, to, to the saints. So that is somehow like receiving something that belongs to Our Lady, no? something that is part of her. Uh, it's it's uh, it's fantastic, fantastic. and, and Saint Simon, in that sense, was representing all of us. He was like uh, Saint John the uh, Saint John the Evangelist at the foot of the cross, when Jesus gives Mary to him. Now Mary is given to Saint Simon her spirit, her protection, and Simon represents each one of us. As Saint as Saint John the Evangelist was representing all those who would love Jesus to the end of the world. And for them, Jesus was leaving his mother to him. So that was for hell. But then there's a second premise, which is for purgatory. So how, how that, that one works? That is called the, the uh, Sabbatin privilege. Mm -hmm. Mary appears in uh, 1322, to uh, Pope John the Twenty Second, ah, she appeared to him she as well. To him. Ah. Exactly, and uh, she tells him that um, she wants to extend the privilege that she uh, was uh, was given through to the uh, Carmelites through Simon Stock, and that um, uh, that those who die and they are in purgatory, but they died with the scapular, they still benefit from the scapula. They, not, not only the fact that they are saved, uh, they, they have already received that privilege, but now they're going to receive a second privilege, which is that if they are in purgatory, and if it's good for them, then as soon as possible, and meaning the first Saturday after their death, they are going to be free from purgatory. Hmm. So the scapula has in that sense this, this double dimension. It's a benefit for you on earth and it's a benefit for you in eternity mm. because you are going to have a second um, privilege that you will be taken if you are in purgatory, which is unfortunately <laughs> very common, uh, 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 I guess. Yes, for avoid, I mean, avoiding purgatory is very difficult. It's no? very difficult. It's, it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, uh, most... Uh, of, uh, of people who are going to go to heaven, they certainly pass some time. Talking about Carmelites, St. Teresa of Jesus, she had to, uh, apparently, revelation, whatever, Exactly. she had to go to, uh, to the purgatory, do a genuflection, and then she went to heaven. So, <laughs> if St. Teresa... <laughs> of Avila. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, let's pray, let's pray, continue <laughs> praying for each and every one of us. Pope Gregory the Tenth who died in 1276, uh, therefore uh, like 25 years after the apparition of Mary to St. Simon's Stock, he wanted to be buried with the scapula. And in uh, 1830, 
that's 554 years later, they open his coffin and they find the scapular intact. Oh, wow. In perfect <laughs> conditions. So it shows a tremendous uh, sign that this man, you know, was saved because of the scapular, and as his scapular is saved, his soul is saved also. There are many st many statues that are very beautiful that we all can see that sometimes is um, a composition of the souls in purgatory when Our Lady is on a Saturday going to rescue them. And you have, it's beautiful, you have Our Lady, then the child Jesus, and the Jesus has a scapular in his hand, no? So he's asking the souls to pick up the scapula, and he, he's not putting them out. No? Exactly. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so it is through the scapula that through we the scapula. Say He wants to show it, it's exactly. through the scapula. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, there are many miracles. Um, I remember somebody told me one that happened in... Um, 1929 in Spain with a three-year-old girl that was lost in a forest. The family lost, we couldn't find the, the child. And it is only like three or four weeks later that they find the, the child. And she's still alive and she's perfect. I said, but what happened to you? No, you know, a lady came and she... Uh, she put her mantle over me and she was protecting me and she was giving me food and everything and uh, that's that's why I'm I was here and, and, and I didn't suffer anything so they were amazed huh? so they celebrate a mass in the, at the uh, church uh, village uh, and uh, in thanksgiving and at that church there was a statue of our lady Morcama mm. and the little girl says ah it was this lady it was this lady <laughs> 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 but father, without going too far uh, in the you know in the chat of the conversations in the different uh, YouTube channels of the heralds, this this lady that comes and says, you know, my brother, he is a policeman, and the other day he had a confrontation with thieves. He was shot four times, and uh, but That's one enough. of the shots, one of the shots, which was the one that was going to kill him, got stopped in the scapula. Mm. <laughs> you know, this is, is not 1929, it's probably last year. So, yeah, interesting. Absolutely. Very. But what about the requirements, Father? Because these are the promises, phenomena. I think okay. at this point, everybody, you know, everybody believes in this. But what do we do in order to receive then this? Um, okay, so I would say the first requirement is to receive the scapula hmm? mm -hmm. in good dispositions. Therefore, if you're not in a state of grace, no problem. No problem. No problem. But it should be an incentive. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, ideally, you should be in state of grace because it is obvious that Mary will feel much more comfortable to take under her mantle a person who is in state of grace than somebody who is not. But let's say that some of us, you know, are crossing through life and we are just, you know, in the probably in the worst times maybe we are listening to this and we are knowing the lowest uh no uh, layer of, of our life the first miracle that happened with the scapula was actually to a person it who didn't even want in the right? worst stage yes in exactly. the worst stage. he was not in state of, of grace and and uh and he received, uh, he received. a tremendous benefit so the uh, actually um it is common you know for a priest when she's um in an accident, for example, somebody is, is dying, that um, it will give, he will give him absolution, conditional absolution, if the person is not conscious, etc. And uh, it is also nice that that uh, the that he will receive the scapula mm. under condition that he wants to receive it, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is good to know that uh, in a case of death, in case of death, even a lay person can impose the scapula on someone oh, that's because important. there is no other other, other possibility oh. there's no other time this is the, this is the last opportunity that you have so the church in that moment opens all the doors to it's save like the baptism person. in, a, in mm -hmm. an extreme situation anyone even an atheist could administer baptism <laughs> as long as they do it in the in what the way you know, the faith of the church. So the atheist does it because the one who's receiving it wants to receive it. Mm -hmm. So it has mm -hmm. to do with the faith of the other. So it can work. Perfectly. So, I mean, yeah, impressive. It's amazing how charitable the church is at the moment of, uh, of death. No? Absolutely. At the moment of death, you know, everything, all the laws uh, uh, come down. There is no law anymore. 
whatever is good for the salvation of the yeah, person mercy. can be done. Yes. It's, uh, well, that's, the, that, that's what we're doing on this earth. It's for the salvation of souls. Everything else is extra. Exactly. So, Father, then when the person receives it for the first time, we are admitted then into the Carmelite uh, Precisely. Family. family. But doesn't have, the priest doesn't have to be a Carmelite to receive you. In the past, it, it, it was necessary, but uh, not today anymore. Mm. It can be any priest, the, or even a deacon with the authorization of a priest can impose the scapular, you know, um, uh, yeah. to anyone. And there is a formula, there is a, there is a, a formula, yeah, right here, if you yes, can see, here. there we're going to project it, that, that, that has, the, has the formula. Mm. We can read it quickly. Receive this scapular, a sign of your special relationship with Mary. So sign. it's a sign of this mm. relationship. It's also important that it's not a blessing upon the the scapular itself, but upon the person. Absolutely. The, the blessing is above all on the person. Uh, whom you pledge to imitate. So Imitation of exactly. Family. Because you you uh, you receive the garment, you receive therefore the spirit of Mary, you become another uh, son of Mary. May it be a reminder to you of your dignity as a Christian in serving others and imitating Mary. So oh. it reminds you that, that you have a, a dignity and therefore an obligation that you, uh, that you have to, uh, to live according to the Christian principles. Wear it as a sign of her protection and of belonging to the family of Carmel which is the family of Mary, because, as we just mentioned, voluntarily doing the will of God and devoting yourself to building a world true to his plan of community, justice, and peace. Mm. So this is the, the formula that uh, the priest or, or anyone who is imposing the scapula can say for the person to understand, okay, you know, Mary is going to protect you, but you also have an obligation. It's not only Mary that has an obligation towards you. You also have an obligation. That's a covenant no? uh, in which um, you are going to, uh, to take Mary's spirit, therefore Jesus' spirit, and you are going to, uh, to live according to, uh, to Jesus' will. So that's the first one we have received. Then we, we, we receive from the priest. And then there are daily devotions that we need to follow? Yes. Uh, there, um, you are supposed to say a prayer. Hmm? You're supposed. It, it's not very clear which prayer, because apparently Mary didn't require. But the Pope then, then you know, in order to make it m more formal, it uh, required that you pray. You say a prayer, hmm? and especially the Rosary. Uh, you say the the Rosary to uh, to Lord Jesus Christ with Mary. And you say it every day. So if you pray a rosary every day, you can include that in your intentions. Oh, exactly. Not, yes. So you, we're praying the, the rosary is um, you're fulfilling the obligation that you have uh, through the uh, the reception of the scapular. Father, there is something beautiful here. It says that uh, once we start using the scapular, the action of our lady in our soul moves us to practice all virtues. No, so the moment we start using that scapular, uh, our lady is, starts influencing us. And all of a sudden we start finding uh, the practice of virtues easier. Of course. You or will more accessible. Not easier, but like it's more absolutely. accessible. Absolutely. You, immediately you will feel uh, that there is something that has changed in you. Mm. Something has become more, more Marian, more uh, Christocenter. And, uh, and wishing Christ to be like our lady in a sense. Exactly. Right? Uh, the same way th that uh, Mary, you know, in her heart, the center of her heart is our Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore, the, the center of your heart has to be our Lord Jesus Christ, and he has to be in, in your heart, and your heart has to, you know, uh, be in accordance with the heart of, uh, of Jesus and Mary. And in Fatima, when uh, Mary appeared, the last apparition was in October, Mary appears as a Carmelite. Therefore, she appears with the scapular, and uh, she um, she uh, also Saint Joseph appears. Hmm? So, therefore, she is uh, in Fatima. She is telling us you have to pray the rosary and wear the scapular. 
So this is. I have the Washington Saint Joseph too, no? <laughs> I have the Washington precisely. <laughs> Which is part of another another An- episode. Another, another big, big, <laughs> big episode. Episode. My father also then because he said, okay, um, our lady moves us to practice all virtues. Our lady moves us to be like her. And then Brother Justin was commenting that to her earlier in the program. No, uh, the devil takes away what he promises. Our lady gives and gives more, but in turn she also asks us because one of the conditions is about chastity. No, of chastity course. corresponding to the person's state. So maybe you can clarify that part. Of course, because we we have a mind and and we have. Uh, a body, a action. No? We think and we do. So our thinking has to be according to the thinking of our Lord Jesus Christ. But our actions, what we do, the way we live, etc., also has to be. And essentially, it's the the practice of purity, which is the the cleaning of the uh, of your actions of any impure things, impure Thoughts, ideas, words, deeds. Of course, uh, impure desires, impure uh, uh, thinking, etc. Because um, the thinking of our Lord Jesus Christ and the thinking of Mary is total purity. It's, it's a thinking that is fantastic. And if your thinking is not pure and your actions, therefore, are, are not pure, you can never be close to Jesus or close to Mary because they are completely different to you. So you can have bad thoughts, bad gazes, bad conversations, but use bad words. Bad uh, words, n- exactly. No, right? Bad words is something that unfortunately is um, quite common, especially at a certain age, etc. But we have to remember that um, our Lord Jesus Christ has a certain way of speaking. And the devil has another way of speaking. <laughs> What a so nice analogy. <laughs> who invented the, the dirty words? Was it Jesus or was the devil? So when you are speaking with dirty words, you know, you are speaking the language of the devil. The so how can you call yourself son of God if you are talking with the language of the devil? Are you a, are you a son of the devil? So remember, you know, you have to choose your words because in the words that you, that you use, you are saying who you are. No, and some people have this misconception, no, okay, manhood, you have to use no dirty words, bad words. And, and no, it's not like that. The more the, the more manly the person is, the more control we have. Exactly. But also applies no to also to, to all kinds of people too, no, because some people say, Oh no, you know what I I'm a person who is direct. Yeah, but you can still uh, be very direct without using, you know, bad words. Of course, yeah. uh, absolutely. You have to be direct Decent. in the right direction. <laughs> in the right direction. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Uh, what a misconception and then finally father there is a part that honestly many people get confused it's about okay doing some fasting related to the scapular so how do we brother justin how do we explain this part uh we'll make this is quick. something i think that came later hmm? uh-huh. i think it's additional vo- devotion additional yes um we humans love to complicate things yeah Exactly. I always add extras. It's always extras, right? They It weren't is. there originally, It but is. there were something good. They existed in the East, right? The fasting on Wednesday. Of course. So of they course. said, well, okay, well, this is good, so we add it. But it wasn't a part of the original um, pro- uh, request of Our Lady. No, apparently it was not in that conversation with Simon. Simon. So it means that um, maybe presupposes that you are good, And now you are acting well, etc. And therefore, you don't need to do so much. Maybe he's willing to sacrifice something. Yeah. Yeah. But most sacrifices of, of food, of fasting, can be exchanged for prayer. But when you behave well, actually, you are fasting. Necessarily. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> fasting off. <laughs> exactly. Because you're, you're not going to be a drunkard. You're not going to, to eat too much, etc. No? But our Lord mentions that. It's fat of... Uh, Fast from injury, fast, uh, uh, use justice, use, uh, use mercy. Precisely. Our Lord may, translated that in his Gospels, where he already was moving away from more of a pharisaical element of fasting to a Christian sense, which was more the practice of virtue. But it's nice to do fasting in the sense that, of course, we have uh, things that, that we need to offer reparation for, and also for those who are not doing any reparation of their sins your suffering will cover their reparation and in that sense you are you are winning 
uh, heaven for you because you're the savior of the other persons. You're participating in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you can clarify that it's not the fasting of Good Friday, maybe. Or, right? No, 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 no. no, no. But exactly. it's something this that we sacrifice. This is extra. This mm -hmm. is extra. Something that we sacrifice. Right. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Of course, the, the big fasting is is the good the Good Friday because it was then when our Lord Jesus Christ gave the maximum of Himself for the salvation. So, so of course we have to unite ourselves in that moment and also offer with Him, you know, uh, a suffering to unite our suffering with His suffering. Yeah, also, people um, used to be in, in the tradition of the Carmelites; they would fast of meat on Wednesdays. And on Saturdays, exactly, so they would eat. They would, those also would eat fish days. Right. So, Father, a very practical thing that maybe our audience is also concerned: if you are allergic to wool, is there a way to avoid? Uh, you know, I mean, to use the scapular and something? Because here we have, for instance, one that is is wool inside mm -hmm. and it has a little bit of plastic. So that's allowed, right? It is completely. It is, yes, no? completely. Th this scapular you have no contact uh, of wool with uh, with your skin. But also uh, you have to know that you can wear the scapular above your clothes and not necessarily under. Hmm? It depends, uh, but normally it is done to use under your your, uh, your shirt. Uh, but this uh, type of scapular, for example, they are covered with plastic so, that, so you will not have any contact uh, of uh, wool with, with your skin. Then if you lose your scapular, or you break your scapula, etc. You just change it for another one. Uh, it, it's it's they can be blessed, mm -hmm. but the enrollment was done to you on your soul, basically. Exactly. It's not mandatory to be to be blessed. It, it, it's uh, it's good, but uh, the you don't need to receive it for a second exactly. time. The, the reception of the scapula is forever, even in purgatory. Well, there is a story actually very short but interesting in the trenches in the First World War that all the soldiers went to wash up and then it was a lull in the bombardments and everything else and they go and so on and one of them starts washing up, takes off a scapula, puts it for a moment hanging in somewhere there and then they start bombarding. And so they'll take off running and they'll land in their trench. Uh, and then he remembers, oh my gosh, I forgot the scapula. Exactly. We, what are going to do? But they're going to kill me, imagine this, they're bombarding now. So he goes running, right, goes, uh, leaves the trench, open field, and this is, you know, 1917, 1916, I don't know what part of, the, of, of this brutal trench war. And all of a sudden he arrives there, picks up the scapula, wears it, and then starts running back to the trench. And when he arrives, what he finds, that a direct hit had lit obliterated everybody in the trench and he was the only one saved because he ran <laughs> to go pick exactly. up his scapula. Amazing. <laughs> no, Amazing. What a <laughs> exactly, exactly. So the um, the blessing comes from our Lord Jesus Christ but as all the graces as the uh, the rain came from the little cloud a uh, symbol of Mary in the time of Elijah the prophet we are going to ask uh, the blessing which is a, another sacramental, which is something that will bring the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ to uh, to the person, and we want to bring this blessing to all of you, all those who are uh, following us in the Salve Maria podcast, especially in this one that uh, talks about the scapular and all the benefits that the scapular has for you. So, through intercession of Holy Lady Mount Carmel, the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come upon all of you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.